Hi, with the three-day Yantif uh, coming up at the end of this week, Mir Hashem, when Sukkot is coming. Uh, so for those of you in Chutzlaretz or people here in Israel that are keeping two days in Yantif, so we, we end up with a three-day Yantif. Um, and especially because uh, Sukkot this year is early and it's hotter maybe even than usual, uh, I want to address the question of showering on Yantif, the halachos of showering. And also just something that, because it doesn't come up that frequently, although we just had it in Rosh Hashanah, but I want to just address the issue of the Erev Tavshilin. So I just want to speak for a couple of minutes here, uh, you know, a brief, a brief here in Halacha, uh, just about these two ideas, the, the aspect of showering on a three-day antis and the idea of Erev Tavshilin. Uh, so let's just first talk about showering. Um, basically, the story is like this. You know, as we're aware that a malacha is different on Shabbos and Yom Tov. On Shabbos and Yom Kippur, you know, malacha is usher completely. All malacha is prohibited, and it's not permissible under any circumstances. On Yom Tif, it gets more complicated. Uh, it gets more complicated because there's more things that are permissible. You know, I heard once uh, one of my Rebbe and Marav, the Rav Nathan Weissman, uh, who's the uh, Mashkiach in the Yeshiva in Passaic, New Jersey, so he said to me once, uh, you know, the following thought. He said, you know, Hilchos Shabbos are difficult. You know, Hilchos Yom Tif are extremely difficult. The Hilchos Chalmoyed are nearly impossible. You know, because the more that it's allowed, you know, the harder it is. Because the more that people just make assumptions and assume that things are okay and don't really know what the differences are. And a lot, a lot of times people, you know, would never be Mechal Shabbos, but they end up being Mechal Yantif um, because they just don't know that certain things are okay and certain things are not okay. Um, so when, the, when it comes to Yantif, the basic general idea, you know, is, is that there's such a thing called a Malachas Ochal Nefesh, that the types of Malacha that's necessary for human sustenance, for keeping us alive, is permissible to do on Yantif. Uh, however, uh, Chazal say that only the types of ochel nefesh, only the types of basic malachos that are shafel lechol nefesh, that are equally applicable to all people, meaning that all people uh, have the same need for this type of malacha on, on yantif, those are considered to be malachos that are permissible to do. But let's say a malacha that even though it was being done for a person's uh, own use, for their own sustenance, for their own use, however, it's not the type of thing that all people need to do. It's not shave lechol nefesh. It's not equally applicable to all. Let's say it's only the type of thing that only wealthy people will do and not and not poor people. So then that's not considered to be permissible anyantiv, and it's not considered to be ochol nefesh if it is not shave lechol nefesh. So whereas, let's say, lighting a fire for cooking, uh, you know, is permissible, uh, and that's why we're allowed to light a stove, not, uh, you know, not, not to light a new fire, but to extend the fire from another one from, you know, from before. So to, to, to extend the fire is permissible for cooking purposes, uh, you know, but it would not be permissible for incense. Uh, for example, because the incense is not something that everybody needs, you know, while some people enjoy it and some people find it to be beneficial, but because it's not a basic need for everybody. Uh, this is also the question for smoking, right? Many posts can say that smoking is not permissible in Yantif for the same reason. Some posts can say it is. You know, even though that, uh, you know, to, to burn something in order to enjoy it is permissible, but if, if smoking is not shovel a whole nefesh, if it's not something that is equally enjoyed by all, so then it's very questionable whether it's mutter on Shabbos, uh, on, Yantif, uh, on Yantif or not. So another one of the questions that gets into this is the question of showering. Uh, because in order to shower, right, in order to use the hot water, so let's just talk about what's happening here. When you turn on the hot water in the sink, right, in the faucet, or in the shower, in the bathtub, so what happens here? I turn the water on here. Now, somewhere in a boiler in the house, in the basement, or in Israel, on the roof, let's say, right, so there's cold water that's being going into the boiler to replace the hot water that I just took out, right? There's a big boiler that's got, you know, dozens of gallons of water in it, and I open up that boiler in order to take out water. So anytime I'm taking out water from the boiler, cold water water is going in and getting cooked in its place, and that's cooking on, on Yantif or Shabbos, and that's why we're not allowed to use hot water on Shabbos. So let's say like this, on Yantif, you know, if it's for eating or drinking, um, so then it's for sure permissible. In other words, if I want to run the hot water from the sink in order to drink hot water from the sink, that's permissible to do, because I'm cooking that water in order to, in order to drink it. Furthermore, because I'll say that washing your hands and washing your face that's considered to be shovel chol nefesh, to wash, wash your hands and face in hot water. Therefore, on Yantif, uh, as opposed to Shabbos, on Yantif, to turn on the hot water in order to wash my hands and wash my face is permissible to do. I'm allowed to do that. Again, even though in the boiler water is getting cooked, I'm allowed to cook that water to wash my hands and face. That's considered to be shovel chol nefesh, that's considered to be equal for everybody, and that's considered to be a permissible malacha. However, when it comes to washing on one's whole body in hot water, so that's something that Chazal say is not considered to be shavu l'chol nefesh. Now, even though nowadays we are all very accustomed and used to um, showering every day in hot water, and it's a very normal thing, 
Um, however, in the time of Chazal, it certainly was it certainly was not. So here you have your first question when it comes to showering. So if, uh, as far as the Gemara and the Shulchan Aruch and any of the earlier post Gemara are concerned, it's very clear that showering a whole body in hot water is not considered to be shovel chol nefesh, and therefore it's not permissible to heat up water to do so on Yantif, and therefore it would not be permissible to turn on the hot water tap, because in so doing, I'm cooking water um, in, the, in the boiler. There are some poskim uh, who have said that nowadays, because it became the norm, and because everybody nowadays showers in hot water almost every day, nowadays it became the norm, that it is considered to be shovel chol nefesh. There are poskim that, 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 do, uh, that do permit the showering uh, on Yantif. What I would like to do, though, is, uh, you know, because there are many that, that do not permit, so, per, permit it, and uh, it seems that most of the mainstream uh, poskim uh, do not permit showering in, in, in hot water on Yantif uh, straight out. So I, I'd like to just uh, present a way in which it is mutter, basically according to everybody, um, in a lechatchila way, in a mutter way. So if a person really feels the need that they need to shower on Yantif, so rather than showering in hot water, which really is questionable, uh, if they will do the following, um, so then it's, you know, then it's, it's permissible to. And that, that's like this. So the Mishabur writes um, in the Shara Tzion that if showering in hot water is not considered to be shavu nefesh, showering in warm water is. Uh, washing one's whole body off in warm water is considered to be something at a standard that is applicable across the board. And therefore, the Mr. Buddha writes that if a, if a person wants to heat up water in order to wash, not in hot water, but in warm water, that is permissible to do. And one is therefore allowed to take a warm shower on yantif, meaning to turn on the hot water, not enough that the water coming out is hot, not like I would do it during the week. It doesn't have to be cold. It doesn't have to be like during the nine days, where I, just enough that I can handle it. But if the water is warm and not hot, then that is permissible. However, there's a big uh, problem that people have to really have to be careful about, especially women, and that is when it comes to schitas seyar, when it comes to squeezing the hair. Uh, under no circumstances is a person allowed to wash their hair on Yantif, not with shampoo, and I'm just not with water. Even just going like this with the water in your hair, um, it causes the water to get squeezed out, um, and that's not permissible. And um, you know, likewise, in terms of drying your hair, you know, you're not allowed to squeeze it, you're not allowed to you know, squeeze the water out. So what I would recommend is if you need to shower, I know that a person's head can get itchy and it's uncomfortable, especially over three days, um, but, uh, you know, it, it's really, really not uh, not okay to shower your hair. It's very, very problematic. If you need to shower, you could shower in warm water. You can even shower off, uh, you know, your whole body in warm water, but really just avoid the, te- the, the hair. Um, and obviously, when you're drying off after the shower, make sure to, you know, avoid squeezing water out of a towel or anything along those lines, you know, that uh, a person might do under normal circumstances. But otherwise, it's mutter. Just to finish up with a quick uh, point about Erev Tafshilin, just to remember, because it's not something that comes up that frequently, although this year it, it's coming up a lot. Uh, but the halacha is that on, no, under normal circumstances, while we are allowed to do malacha on Yantif, we are only allowed to do malacha on Yantif for use on that day of Yantif, meaning, uh, you know, from the night before till the following morning, or that morning till that afternoon, but you're not allowed to do malacha on that day of Yantif for the following day, not for the second day of Yantif, not for Chalamoy, and not for Shabbos, uh, which is after Yantif either. So what we would have, you know, in a situation where Yantif... Um, it's in the middle of the week, let's say Tuesday and Wednesday. So that, that's fine. So you do malacha on Monday for Tuesday and Tuesday for Tuesday. When it comes to Wednesday, you could do malacha for Wednesday, uh, you know, but not for Cholamoy and not for, for after, after Chag. But when you have a Shabbos coming after two days of Yantiv, so we get stuck because, you know, it's very hard to prepare for Shabbos all the way back on Wednesday, uh, which is Erev Yantiv, before Yantiv, before Shabbos. So the halacha is like this. We do something called an Erev Tafshilin. Uh, which you take one cooked item and one baked item. This is in, you know, it's in all the Siddurim, the Arts Pro Siddur or the Master, and uh, you make a bracha, and what basically it is, what you're doing is, you are, and, and you eat that food then on Shabbos, and before Yantif, what you're doing is you're stating that you are beginning your Shabbos preparations now before Yantif, and without getting into all the uh, complicated rationale and reasoning why it works, uh, the Chazal said that it works, that it allows a person to now prepare on Friday, on Erev Shabbos, when it's Yantif, for Shabbos, right? Again, you cannot prepare for anything else after Chag. You can't do any malacha on Chag for Cholamoy. You can't do any malacha on Chag for after Chag. You can only do malacha on Chag for Shabbos. That's right after. If a person forgot to do um, Erev Tafshilin on Erev Yantif, according to many poskim, they could still do it on Thursday, right? Meaning, in other words, Thursday, which is the first day of Yantif, um, you could still do an Erev Tafshilin on Thursday, um, even though it's already Yantif. If this happens, a person should ask a Shaila. Uh, if you don't have the opportunity to ask a Shaila, then you could just, you know, do the Erev Tafshilin on Thursday, um, and that, that would allow you to go ahead and do, do Malacha then on Friday, um, and, um, I don't want to prepare for Shabbos. Okay, I just wanted to get in a couple of quick halachos. Uh, I just have a quick message that I uh, recorded earlier, which I'm going to add on to the end of this video about some learning that we may do together in Hoshan Rava. Um, okay, have a wonderful, wonderful day. If I don't speak to you again before Yantiv, Chag Sameach will be in touch. Bye-bye.